So everyone has got an attitude of how they want to live a sustainable life and we hope to provide that option. Welcome back everyone. Thank you very much for joining. I'm here with Ada Yip who is with Urban Spring and we're staying in front of their well product which is just going out to the market. Uh, we're here to talk today about social entrepreneurship, building a product that changes mindsets and really just maintaining a positive attitude as you're building your enterprise going forward. So we hope you enjoy this episode. If you do, please remember to like, share and comment. So do me a favor and give us um, an introduction about yourself and about well. Um, so I'm born and brought up in Hong Kong uh, mm -hmm. and uh, so I'm a homegrown sort of Asian girl and um, you know I've been in actually in a corporate world for more than 15 years. Uh, but four years ago I decided that I want to explore sort of social entrepreneurship and got to um, you know network with a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know meet the founder of um, Urban Spring um, which well is our first product um, and that's how I got into you know starting to work with the, the company two years ago okay. and then developed the product. So, well, it's basically a new design water station mm. uh, which we hope that people would refill, you know, really develop, redevelop that trust with uh, drinking water outside home and offices. Okay. Right, so the, the mission really is to reduce the consumption of single use plastic bottle. Okay. We want to provide that alternative. So you're trying to basically get rid of the plastic bottle at the end of the day? I hope so. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. And why is that a problem? I mean, I think that we've all seen all the news in the oceans, but is there a particular problem with plastic and single-use plastic in Hong Kong itself? You know, every single day we've got probably 5 million tons of plastic waste just a day in mm. Hong Kong. Uh, and majority of those are actually uh, plastic bottles. And the majority of the plastic bottle is actually water bottles. Mm. Um, so that's where we're coming from. So it's it's really a huge problem. And we're just talking about Hong Kong, mm. you know. Um, and as far as I know, all the major cities in the world, each year is a double-digit increase in bottle sales. Now, I kind of think like when it comes to these issues, we've had NGOs for years tell yeah. us that we should reduce, reuse, recycle, yeah. Yeah. that we should bring our own bottles, things like that. Like. Yeah. It hasn't worked. I mean, honestly, just, you know, we're still using more and more plastic every day. How is your approach different? I mean, you're using, you're building a product, you're bringing a business solution. Yeah. How, how is this different than just pure advocating? Um, how do you think that this might change the, the market? No, you, I think, you know, Richard, I think you already hit the point, right? I mean, we are providing a product, i.e. an alternative, mm -hmm. right? So um, I think the nonprofit world actually has done a fantastic job basically educating and bringing that awareness in the past, you know, decade, actually. Um, but bringing it to the bottle, it helps. But then if I'm really thirsty in the middle of, you know, Causeway Bay or Central, um, I cannot find water. I cannot mm. refill. I'm really thirsty. I have to go into convenience store and supermarket to buy. So you know, okay. but today I'm providing an alternative. I.e., if you bring your own bottle or even you buy your first disposable of the day, you can actually go and refill as mm. opposed to buy another one. Right. You know, if every if. Uh, normal, like in a really hot day, people buy two or three, but ends up they only buy one. You know, for lazy people, they don't bring their own bottles. We're already saving a lot. Mm. Um, so I think having that alternative, giving people that choice is important. Um, so I think we worked, I see it as a collaboration mm -hmm. with the charities, basically they are very good with advocating, working with the government on the communication and education, and then we focus on the product and work with them on that communication, awareness, and all that. Okay. And more importantly, I think what we try to do is really brand the product, mm -hmm. i.e., you know, not everyone is environmentally friendly, but everyone right. wants to look cool, mm -hmm. you know, everyone has got an attitude of how they want to live a sustainable life right. and we hope to provide that option. Okay. And then how do you change the mindsets? I mean, you know, we talk about, I was actually kind of thinking that, you know, I've started carrying my own hot and cold yeah. bottles now, <laughs> right? Like I'll go to Starbucks with one if yeah. I want a hot or a cold coffee. How do you get people to think that this is cool? Because eventually, even not just cool, like I'm not going to be embarrassed yeah. by carrying this bottle around with me to a meeting. Yeah. Like, 
how, how is that because you like try different bottles you try different cups like you give everyone like but at some point you still have to carry the thing around so yeah. how do you help people just realize that it's it's okay to carry this around yeah, I mean, as you say, the toughest is actually not the product, although it's really quite painful to do product development. The, the toughest thing for a business is changing people's behavior, hmm. you know, to a point about actually carrying a bottle. Um, so I think a couple of things. I think one is from a sort of branding perspective um, and how we position ourselves. I'm not fighting against convenience, you know, because... Right whether it's Hong Kong or some other countries, buying and dumping or recycling is so easy, mm. right? Um, uh, so I think it's about how carrying that bottle or cup is basically is a reflection of who you are. A lot of consumer brands are actually mm -hmm. doing that. Okay. Um, so if people feel that, you know, a gentleman with a suit on feel that they are kind of cool carrying you know that chain store cup you know around and you know almost a display of their way of life of having that morning coffee mm -hmm. why would they not feel that if I portray or mm. associate with a certain image it's very tricky mm -hmm. um, but I think the young pe younger generation um, definitely have already bought into the idea so I think it's how we build the infrastructure who's the easiest to turn over um, right now for you and do you just focus on them only and then work on the harder people later or do you invest into people because the the return is so much greater later like up front it's more difficult like how, how do you make that decision you know it's, it's tricky I would say the early adopters would be the younger people mm -hmm. and the people who are doing sports people are okay. already carrying the bottle so almost I'm basically providing that convenience for them mm -hmm. um, and then for corporates, that's also who I want to target, but probably it's the corporates who want to get consumers or want to be aligned mm -hmm. with the younger people, sporty sport right. people, okay? Um, so that would be my early adopters. And then I move on to the semi-convert and then the hardest one, you know, they will be further down mm. the line. I think just like any products, I cannot aim on day one to be selling and be, you know, basically influencing every single person. So yeah. I think it's really up to us, you know, with the resources that we have, how do we strategize mm. um, and work with different parties yeah. to make a bigger impact, you know, in the short and medium long term. Who's going to pay for this at the end of the day? Because you walk up, do you, do you pay for this with your phone? Like, how does this work? So today, it's paid by the venue that hosts. So okay. For example, the shopping center, they see it as part of customer service. Right. Um, for schools, it's part of the facilities. Okay. Um, later on, we would develop, we switch on that feature, the payment feature, because okay. as we roll out to more space, I can imagine there would be a corner shop that cannot basically provide this for free right. to use it. Right. Uh, but I do, you know, if this is a good replacement of them selling bottled water, yeah. they would be great. They don't have to keep inventory, you know, it's... Oh, so they, they can that. sell this. Save the logistics. Okay. Yeah, okay. so they can sell basically per refill. Okay, okay. Um, so, you know, so there are different payment models. Yeah. At this early stage, uh, we're lucky to be working with um, people who would be basically hosting this and pay an annual yeah. subscription so we don't we try not to sell the product but lease it so that like a photocopy machine yeah um, so that we are uh, we can maintain the brand basically do our own servicing make sure everything is consistent and mm. standard servicing so if you look out say five years from now what do you want your key metrics of success like if you look back at we succeeded what would success be for you is it the number of bottles what's I think the, if, the, if I see situations where people are competing how good looking the water bottles are, <laughs> you know, or people, you know, uh, in a group of friends, someone being, you know, making a comment and say, what are you doing with a disposable? Mm. You know, that would be a scenario that I would like to see if sort right. of that the sort of part of a movement um, that we are part of, mm -hmm. you know, I will be really excited. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's from business perspective, and the traditional matrix will be around how many of this get installed. Mm. To me, I think the the behavior um, and how people see disposable, how people are embracing this, 
um, it is probably more satisfying. Okay. Um, but from you know, obviously from a financial standpoint, it would be basically how many of these get installed. Sure. And also not just number of installation, but actually how many get saved. So All right. how many water get dispensed as opposed to you know water you, you consume through sort of a plastic bottle. Okay. So actually I'm gonna change here a little bit. Yeah. You come from the business background, you came into the social entrepreneurship background, or social mm. space. What did you think about social entrepreneurship before you got into it? And what do you think about it now? It was more out of interest, you okay. know, how does that work? Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, um, I think I still, I'm still very positive about that. I mean, I hope one day is no one talks about social entrepreneurship because it's just entrepreneurs. Okay. And that's, that's yeah, it, yeah. right? Um, so, um, and I think the interesting thing is, um, although we have got a so, sort of that, this field called social entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. But actually people who are in it, a lot of them are not really believing in it. I.e., mm. you know, they're still not just struggling with the business and the social impact, but really, you know, they they don't believe in it in the sense that they're still running it like a non-profit. Okay. Um, so I think there's still a long way to go, although mm. I'm on the positive side. Yeah. Um, you know, how we're set up, uh, not the majority, i.e. we are set up as a limited company by shares. Mm -hmm. uh, we are very, we believe in actually not distributing the, um, not limiting the distribution of profit like someone Right, wants. right, right. Um, because we truly believe we can, you know, we, we can have a sustainable business, you know, um, and attracting the right investors yeah. in, you know, we don't have to set up a particular way so that people feel that, oh, it's doing good, some money is set aside to do X, Y, Z, yeah. you know, it's just, this is the way we believe, this is, you know, the, the reason we set up the company is because of that social mm -hmm. mission, and that's it, you know, obviously, yeah. governance, operation, it needs all to, it all needs to support that, but it doesn't need to be restricted by certain financials. So actually when you when you would have been starting this there was still a premium to be called a social entrepreneur that that was actually like an attractive feature but what you're saying is you're actually flipping it you see the more value and saying no we're just a business and like we have a social mission we're trying to solve it but we're not going to play the social entrepreneurship card. Um, you, yes and no so I'm not playing that card so mm -hmm. for people who are not understanding social entrepreneurship I don't call myself social enterprise because it's just confused them more and mm. then got them to think so are you a charity you know um, so I'm just a startup you know with a very clear mission okay that's it and they just focus on you know what I am selling and, and operating um, but the no part it I think we still need to have this subject or this category called social entrepreneurship because I don't think we're in a world that people believe business and social can come together or actually have a greater mm -hmm. value if mm -hmm. they do both. Um, so we almost need to have this category so that people focus in thinking about it, yeah. um, discussing about it, um, until everyone is on the same page then we probably can get there and just talk about entrepreneurship. Mm. <laughs> but we're not there yet. Yeah. So, you know, so, you know, that's why a forum like this is a good channel mm -hmm. to really just have a healthy debate, okay. you know, of different school of thoughts and how people approach it differently. Great. I think that's all. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>